Welcome back. You're watching uh, Stock Picks and joining me now uh, to unpack We Buy Cars, AfriMets and Cash Build is Anthony Clark from Small Talk uh, Daily Research. Anthony, a pleasure. Thank you so much for being with us today. Nice to be back. I hope all is well in Johannesburg. Hello from Misty Cape Town. Well, uh, Misty is better than just cold. Johannesburg is a cold, uh, Anthony. Uh, but uh, a stock that didn't get a cold a welcome on the JSC's We Buy Cars. I'm keen just to hear your thoughts on this development of the listing of We Buy Cars. And that share price holding up pretty okay. Yeah, let's not forget that We Buy Cars is an unbundling from transaction capital. And I'm sure listeners to this program uh, know the horrendous uh, and precipitous fall in transaction capital share price in the last uh, 12 months or so. And one way to extricate value from that company was to unbundle one of the most successful parts of that business, which is We Buy Cars. Uh, they actually raised uh, literally 903 million rand by placing shares at roughly uh, 1875. And with the current share price trading at about 29, 20 rand and 29 cents, it's been a very successful listing. But I have to caveat, of the last 13 listings of the JSC in the last few years, uh, 10 have actually traded below their listing price. So We Buy Cars so far is, uh, is bucking the trend, and hopefully it'll stay that way as the company has significant growth prospects going ahead. I want to ask uh, Anthony about uh, transaction capital as well and what's left over uh, there. Uh, we do know that that uh, SA taxi business has been ring fenced. Uh, this capital raise, uh, of course, are coming through uh, here. Uh, could we see uh, transaction capital uh, really uh, growing again and becoming a formidable business? Yeah, I think that's a great question. I think, um, again, listeners will realize that any company that has a significant decline in value. And let's, let's not forget this business back in its heyday was nearly a 40 billion rand business. Yes, they spun out We Buy Cars, which is now worth eight and a half billion. Uh, the current transaction capital share price is two rand 66, giving a market value of 2.2 billion rand. So it's a significant fall in value, even if you strip out We Buy Cars. As you correctly say, SA Taxi caused all the problem. That has now been ring fenced. And if market whispers are, be, are to be believed, um, that business uh, is likely to be sold uh, in, uh, in the medium term to a, potentially a bank who will take all the debts off transaction capital hands, leaving what will then just be a business called Newton, okay. which is the specialist uh, second-hand car loan book. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, post the SA taxi exit, uh, should that occur to reasonable value or even just at no value if a debt is uh, extinguished, that transaction capital needs to rebrand itself and change its name to hopefully then reflect uh, the underlying business that is left, which is Newton, which is actually a good business. Uh, again, since the unbundling of We Buy Cars uh, a week or so ago, the share price of transaction capital has naturally fallen because what's left isn't exactly that appealing until SA Taxi goes. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise uh, people to rush out right now and buy the company. I have a standing aim that in an election period, it's uh, better to pay a little bit of a premium after the election when you have some certainty as to what's going on in this country than to buy stocks now with the uncertainty of May the 29th ahead. But I think if SA Taxi were to be cleaned out and Newton, uh, which has nice growth prospects, were to remain, then transaction capital in theory uh, does look interesting, but not quite yet. I must ask you then, uh, you know, if, uh, for instance, we do see that sale of SA Taxi and Newton as a business, is that worth a listing? Uh, is that a company uh, that could trade on the stock exchange uh, with the liquid liquidity uh, that it might, uh, you know, enjoy or might not enjoy, Anthony? I think what will happen is uh, if SA Taxi is, uh, is, uh, is sold, uh, Transaction Capital will just change its name to reflect for a sole remaining business inside the company, which is Newton. Mm. So basically the old business, as we know it, will just basically vanish. So the constituent parts, which is We Buy Cars and then Newton, will be listed. And SA Taxi will basically just wheel into the future and somebody else can sort out that mess. I want to talk a little bit more also about uh, We Buy Cars here and just uh, the second-hand vehicle market in South Africa being, uh, that's the foundation of, uh, you know, the investment case. In fact, uh, when you hear Fan Van der speaking about this business, they just love to sell cars and they really are good at it. But of course, the macros here are uh, going to influence the way this business can grow uh, quite a bit. Correct. You know, the business started in 2001. And currently is the largest second-hand car dealer in the country, selling around 14,000 vehicles a month from 15 uh, supermarkets, 74 buying points, 
and it has about 340 buyers nationally. And its, its simple aim is basically to just get bigger. Uh, at the end of the day, it has a, a material market share of a market, but it's not a dominant force. Mm. And we all know you can buy secondhand cars from, you know, Joe Public in the street, from any dealer in the country, or from any of the, the, the known sites. So they intend to just increase their footprint by having more places with more agents across the country to capture an ever larger pool of the secondhand car buying market. And as we all know, new car sales have been very tough for the last few years because of the economy and rising interest rates. And consumers are looking for slightly better value in the secondhand car market. And what We Buy Cars has done very successfully, it, it has the scale and the buying power to basically acquire cars quickly. So if you're a seller, you can sell quickly for cash. And if you're a buyer, you can go into any one of their large uh, warehouses or supermarkets and see a vast variety of cars for you to pick and choose from. So it is, it is in a fairly unique position. And I think that will remain unchallenged for quite some time. But as it gets bigger, competitors are bound to enter that market. But I think for the next few years, it is a very interesting footprint and will significantly grow its underlying uh, turnover and profitability. And I would not be surprised if uh, We Buy Cars has a good run in, in the next two to three years. But I think after that, I'd be a bit concerned about competitors coming in. And you can't be the largest player in the market because at the end of the day, you know, if you're the largest player in the market, where's your growth coming from? Mm -hmm. We'll be watching this one very, uh, you know, carefully. I think for me, it's very fascinating to have seen uh, We Buy Cars list the way that it has. And like you're saying, that share price holding up in a way that is encouraging, I would say. I agree. Keen to also touch on Afrimat. Uh, we saw uh, them release an update yesterday, but also a rally in the stock price as uh, the Lafarge has come on board. Correct. Again, uh, the share price is up by about 13% uh, in the last 10 days or so as the long-delayed Lafarge transaction, which is a, an aggregates, construction materials and cement company, which Afrimat bought uh, in June 2023, but was delayed uh, by competition tri tribunal uh, investigations was at last announced, I think, on the 10th of April. And on that, uh, the news, uh, the stock rallied quite hard. Yesterday, we had a trading update for its year ended February uh, 2024, where the company indicated its results for the period would be up between 21 and 26%, which is taking the company back to its uh, uh, highlight, which is the 2022 results, where they earned 5 Rand 42. So the guidance in this period is roughly 5 Rand 65 in a mid-period. And I think the, the company is basically... Um, diversifying itself away from its dominant iron ore business and with Lafarge coming in, construction materials growing, phosphates coming in in a couple of years and of course some of the other transactions it's done in the last few years, the risk mitigation factors inside Afrimat being purely driven by iron ore is beginning to wane but it'll still be an important asset for at least two to three years. But again, the iron ore price has been great in the last six months but year to date is falling quite sharply. It's down from $144 beginning of the year to the current price of about $109. So it will have an impact on first half earnings, but year-to-date numbers will be sparkling. I must actually ask you about uh, that and uh, the mix here, you know, between the aggregates business and the mining uh, business here. Is there a sweet spot that Afrimat could achieve uh, to ensure uh, that they're uh, defensive, better defensive? Yeah, the answer is yes. Uh, if you look at the last results from Afrimat, Roughly 75% of its operating profit came from iron ore. Now, nobody wants to be invested in a general mining company where the dominant asset uh, is so volatile. So what Afrimat has successfully done in the last few years is diversify itself away uh, from iron ore, which was a very successful transaction many years ago by moving into the likes of uh, other commodities. And I think the purchase of Lafarge at what I think was a bargain basement price uh, and Lafarge, uh, back in 2021, made 311 million rand in profit. And when Afrimat bought it, it was making 38. It has significant scope to improve its underlying profitability and operating margins. And if Afrimat gets that right, it could, up, it could add, I estimate, a rand 20 to its underlying earnings. He then factor in uh, its phosphate business, and more importantly, its Unkamati anthracite business which has gone from a loss-making position last year to potentially this year making several, several hundred million rand. You start in a two to three year window, diversifying yourself away from an iron ore dominance to a much more balanced portfolio between iron ore, uh, construction materials, um, 
phosphates, and of course coal, which again should help the underlying rating. And I think the market is now beginning to see that coming through in AFRIMAX numbers. But I think the real kicker will come in 2024 and more so in 2025. But at 60 year, uh, two rand and 51 cents as I speak, year to date, sorry, in the last 12 months, up 12, sorry, up 24.75%. The market is clearly seeing uh, significant prospects in AFRIMAX, and I agree with its underlying uh, synopsis. And with that said, I'm very keen then to touch on cash build because, of course, this is a construction materials business, which Afrimat kind of used to be. Uh, possibly it looks very different here, Anthony. It doesn't look like uh, the same fundamentals are playing into both businesses. Yeah, I've covered cash build uh, since 1996. Uh, it was three rand 23 when I covered the company. It reached a high of over 500 rand. And as of today, uh, it's bouncing off a 52 week low at 142 rand 90 cents. Uh, cash build is actually in the residential uh, and DIY construction market. So if you were improving your home and uh, looking to build an extension or doing some DIY, you would go to a cash build to buy your paint, your bricks, your cement, etc., etc. As we all know, the underlying economy has not been great in the last uh, few years uh, with a rising interest rate environment and a constrained consumer. And as such, people have not been spending money on improving their homes and building extensions and perhaps decorating because there are more important needs for their money, basically putting food on the table and paying their bills. And that's clearly been evident in the underlying earnings profile of cash build, which has seen declining earnings for the last uh, two to three consecutive years. Now, what this company needs is basically declining interest rates and a feel good factor to come back into the economy. And I don't think anyone listening to this program uh, is expecting that in 2024, maybe in 2025. But again, it all depends what happens in the national election and what economic policy is going forward. So cash build is historically cheap, but it's cheap for a reason. And I see no reason to rush headlong in into the stock despite its valuation, because the uncertainty in the economy and the consumer means that uh, the last thing anybody wants to do right now is either move house, buy a new house or renovate. And as such, the likes of a cash built, an ital tile, a languishing at 52-week uh, low levels. And there might there be an opportunity here for cash build uh, to looking at pivoting. Uh, like you're saying, the state of the consumer is super, super fragile. And there's so many, uh, you know, uh, factors play, uh, playing into the low consumer and business confidence that we're seeing here in South Africa. Uh, you know, them sticking to their guns. Uh, is that working for them? Uh, is it possible that that model needs rejigging to remain relevant uh, in these economic times? Again, a great question. Cash Builders has, an, has had a very successful run in organic growth and rolling out branches to parts of the country not previously serviced by the formal retail segment in the DIY and uh, informal building market. Uh, sadly, its track record in transactions or acquisitions has not been great. Uh, it bought PL hardware many years ago, and that business, quite frankly, has been an unmitigating dog. Uh, it's lost money and it's just taken up management time. Uh, it tried to buy the building company from Pepco a few years ago, but luckily uh, the Competition Commission intervened to uh, stop that transaction due to, due to uh, competitive issues. And that was a good move because uh, the company has not done that well since. So all in all, cash build sticks to what it knows, but uh, it is launching new branches across the country. But as I said, it needs a better consumer uh, uplift from the economy and interest rates to decline. I do not see the company diversifying away from its core base. So it's sticking to DIY and uh, residential building, and that's what it does, and it does well, but it only does well when the economy does well. Mm -hmm. Another important one, I think, uh, just when I was reading up on cash build, uh, one of the things that the CEO has been very open about is that South Africa has a housing shortage. And at some point, we're going to have to address uh, that. Uh, is that something uh, that we could also, uh, you know, pin the investment case on? That at some point, uh, you know, we must start building RDP houses again. Uh, we must start addressing the fact that uh, too many people don't have reliable shelter here. Again, cash build, excuse me. Mm is predominantly in the, uh, what I would call the refurbishment yeah, okay, and the extension market. It doesn't really get involved in supplying building materials to the, the new builder. Most of the RDP houses mm -hmm. and the large government contracts uh, generally tend to source and tender their uh, construction materials directly from large suppliers. Mm -hmm. Again, it's the man in the street, you know, refurbishing their house and building an extension that tends to shop of the likes of a cash belt. So I don't really see the, the greater housing market being uh, 
an attractive area for cash flow because it sticks to what it knows, which is refurbishment, extensions, and general improvement. What that said, Anthony, is it beneficial to rank these from one to three in order uh, of uh, you know your preference in terms of re for retail investors uh, looking to buy? Again, uh, as as of current prospects and the underlying prospects of a company, I would rate Afrimat number one. Mm -hmm. We buy cars number two, and cash bill looks cheap, but uh, it'll probably be cheap for another twelve months. So it's my third call on the list. So one, two, three is Afrimat. We buy cars. Cash built. With that said, uh, keen to get into our uh, educational segment today. I believe we're talking about a Stalingrad grad uh, takeover. Yeah, Stalingrad defense is, a, is an old-fashioned defense, which a company uses against a protagonist when there's a hostile attack on a company. And uh, recently we saw uh, Country Boat Holdings, which is an unlisted poultry company, launch uh, a, a bid to buy Quantum Foods. Now, for any listener to this program, Quantum Foods share price has run from 4 rand 25 at the end of February to a high of 18 rand and is now trading at around 16 rand. So quite frankly, if you were in Quantum Foods this year, uh, nothing else mattered. You would have made nearly three times your money. And what Quantum Foods has successfully done uh, since 2020, when Country Boat Holdings again tried to buy the company, it's, it's engaged in what's called a Stalingrad uh, tactic, where basically you do not do anything. You, you hold up in your bunker, you refuse to engage, you refuse, you refuse to talk, you refuse to actually even meet the company. And it's a, it's a tactic that goes back to the Second World War, when the Russian city of Stalingrad basically uh, defended itself from the German army by basically barricading itself into its, uh, its town and doing anything it could to actually withstand the attack. And that's exactly what Quantum Foods has done. It has completely refused to engage with country foods, and as such, it's uh, been buying its own shares uh, alongside management and other parties. And that is called a classic Stalingrad defense. You hold yourself up and you refuse to engage, hoping the protagonist eventually tucks its tail between his legs and goes away. Very fascinating stuff, Anthony. Thank you for today. It's been a pleasure having you here on Stock Picks as usual. That was Anthony Clark from Small Talk Daily Research.